Hey guys, this is Robbie again. I'm going to do a quick um, follow-up continuation, whatever you want to call it, to my last video of uh, blood flow through the heart. And this is talking about the actual coronary blood circulation um, to the heart itself. So the, the drawing here is slightly different. And this is one I had to come up with on my own just because I was really struggling to visualize and understand which coronary artery was doing what. And until I did this, uh, I was really quite confused. So just bear with me while I get this drawn, and feel free to copy this if you want to. If you want to improve upon it, do that. Um, doesn't really matter to me. Okay, there's our basic heart. Uh, not trying to make anything too complicated here because I just want to get the blood flow down. So there's our superior inferior vena cava, our aortic arch, and then pulmonary trunk and pulmonary um, artery. So you basically have two sides of blood flow through the heart um, to the actual heart. Uh, we're going to have a right and left side. So we're going to start off with arterial flow. And with the arterial flow, we're going to have a right side, and we're also going to have a left side. So we're going to start off with the right. And if you get this basic schema down in your head, and then when you actually see a human heart, or it's just see a heart in general, um, in pictures, whatever, hopefully it'll help get you more acclimated to where things are. So, you know blood is going to be pumped from the lungs to the, through the uh, pulmonary veins into the right atrium. I said right and pointed to the left, the left atrium, um, to the left ventricle, and out to the rest of the heart, or the rest of the body. But before it goes to the rest of the body, it's going to give some offshoots to give pretty much the freshest blood right directly to the heart itself. Um, heart is kind of important. It's doing some important stuff for us. So it wants to keep that well supplied. Okay, so on the right side, the first branch it gives off, that is going to be called the right coronary artery. That's the cat in the background, yes. Um, the right coronary artery actually loops around back, and it doesn't really change names, so it's the right coronary... Oh, come on, cat. <laughs> She just wanted to be back for this one, too. Okay. Peace. They always sleep, except when I'm trying to do some kind of educational video. What the hell? All right. So right coronary artery on the front. And again, this is an anterior view. So um, you're looking at the front side. It loops around back. Any dotted lines means that it's on the back of the heart. So it loops around back as well. And that's all the right coronary artery. So two, um, it gives off some branches. The first branch is the right marginal branch of the right coronary artery. You might just hear that termed as the marginal artery. And then three is the posterior interventricular branch. You might hear that as posterior interventricular artery. Um, either way, it's on the back side, posterior, and it's running in between the two ventricles. That's how you can find it. So on the left side, we have another system going on. I'm going to draw that in just like this pinkish color just to stand out. Um, so this first part here, that's going to be called the left I don't know if you can see the numbers too, sorry. Uh, left coronary artery. And the left coronary artery isn't really that long. It um, comes out and then it pretty much branches off immediately. So it's going to give off a branch that comes down the front of the heart or the anterior side on the middle. It's going to loop around back and then anastomose with the posterior interventricular artery. Um, and that part is called the anterior interventricular artery. 
just going to abbreviate a little bit here. And I said anterior and interventricular artery, but it really is the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery. Um, number three here. So left coronary artery splits off up here. This is going to also loop around back and basically peter off here. It's going to have some different tiny smaller branches possibly, but uh, not that we're worried about right here. And then it's also going to give a branch off over here. Okay, so number three is going to be called the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. And circumflex branch just means that it's looping around back. Number four is the left marginal branch. of the left coronary artery. So just like you have a right marginal, you have a left marginal branch as well. So that's the arterial flow. If you can do that a few times and get it down, you start to make sense of what's going on. It's really not too complicated. Um, it's complicated, but it's, it's, it's simple if you memorize the diagram a little bit. Um, so the venous flow, uh, we have all blood, basically no matter where it's coming from in the body, it's trying to find its way back to the right atrium of the heart. So with coronary blood flow as well, we're not really going to have any kind of difference there. Um, drawing all this in a dotted line, we're going to call this the coronary sinus, and we're going to label it A. Sorry, I don't know why I actually wrote it on the heart, but whatever. So again, just remember the coronary sinus is dumping into the right atrium. And feeding the coronary sinus, you have three main things we have to worry about. The first is called the great cardiac vein, and that's huge. It will never look this simple. Just drew A, I meant to draw B. Okay, so B is our great, can't even see that, sorry, um, great cardiac vein. And I think that can sometimes be called the great coronary vein, but I'm not positive. You, know, you might want to double check that, but. Uh, we learned it as great cardiac vein. That's the main supplier of the coronary sinus. It's draining from the whole left side of the heart. So it's draining from the anterior interventricular artery. It's draining um, from the whole left side as well, the left marginal. It's going to have some little offshoots here uh, that you can really look at in an atlas and see well. Um, the main one though, great coronary sinus comes around here from the left circumflex artery, loops around back, and basically goes right into the coronary sinus. So C and D, C is going to be our middle cardiac vein, and D is going to be our small cardiac vein. The middle drains the middle part of the heart. That's how I remember it. And remember with venous flow it's all coming this way towards the sinus. Um, it's on the back side of the heart and it's draining from the posterior interventricular artery. The small cardiac vein D is draining from the right marginal branch. Whoops, and it's actually on the front of the heart. It's looping around back. 
and then it's going right to the coronary sinus. So that's our D, our small cardiac vein. So I do hope this has helped you a little bit. Um, just go over it several times and it will help, I think. Um, at least just put things in, in context in your head as far as where it is. So just remember, if you can break it down and even do these diagrams separately, do one of just the right um, arterial flow, do one of the left arterial flow, and then do one of the venous flow as well and just draw them separately draw them together draw it all the time the more you do it the, the better you'll come to understand and remember it so good luck studying hope this is helpful